Hello! It's time for one of our occasional looks into the world of video game special editions and other video game merchandise. And we begin with this bloody great box, which is literally three times the size <laughs> to actually fit on the sofa of Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite. Now this is one of the biggest and most elaborate of uh, special editions I've ever seen. It comes with like four character statues and a replica set of the Infinity Gems. Ooh, Or are they known as the Infinity Stones now? But you know what? I don't care. So it's a big dark box. You've probably worked that bit out. On the back it gives you a hint of what to uh, expect inside. Look, I'm going to have to actually physically pick the camera up. You've got a statue of Chun-Li, statue of Captain Marvel, statue of Mega Man X, and a statue of Iron Man. And hang on, we're going to zoom in, wait for it. Do -do 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 -do. The mighty Infinity Stone replicas. Ooh. Right, this was very expensive to say the least. Came out a few years ago, copyrighted 2017, and yeah. In America it retailed for about $200, it was about £180 over here if I recall correctly. Yeah, it was an expensive thing, to say the least. So, we're going to have to jump cut to me having pulled all this packaging apart, and I will then show you each part piece by piece, so that you may judge them to your own standards. Also, I'll be judging them to mine. So a little bit of background before we begin properly, uh, Marvel vs. Capcom is a fighting game series where characters from Marvel Comics have a big scrap with Capcom's video game characters. That's about it, really. There's a lot of picking teams and tagging in and out and that kind of stuff. And Marvel vs. Capcom, the first one, very, very good. Marvel vs. Capcom 2, uh, very, very fondly remembered and a lot of fun. Um, not as tight as the first one. There's sort of uh, a big stretch out into billions of characters, but all very good. They then just went into 3D with Marvel vs. Capcom 3, which is pretty good. Then they uh, had sort of extended versions of that. And then Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite, which... Is, yes, I've only played it briefly, it's pretty good fun, it's all right. Um, but for some reason, the graphics are a massive step down from Marvel vs. Capcom 3, which came years before. No idea. Anyway, we're here to look at statues. Look, <gasps> the ironic man. Hello, I'm going to say things that don't really mean for comedic effect. Um, basically, it's an Iron Man statue. <laughs> I couldn't tell you which Mark armour this is, because he's got like 50 billion, hasn't he? These two stripes on the floor seem to be relevant to um, characters' sides or something in the game. The Capcom ones seem to have this on them. And it's alright, it's pretty good as statues go. It's got a decent enough metallic effect. Um, sort of fairly solid plastic with a little bit of give to it, so it's not going to break or nothing. Uh, paint applications all seem fairly solid. Um, there's a little bit of rub on that one. Uh, I mean, this is one of those things I would expect slightly better, even though you're getting four of them, because of the massive price tag. Of, I mean, you're approaching £200. You would pretty much want something a little bit sharper than this, I think. But it's not bad. It's not bad. I would happily have this on a minor shelf if I was particularly into Iron Man. Off you go over there. And now Capcom's robot boy wonder, whatever the bloody hell he is, it's Mega Man X with his ludicrously huge legs and boots. What is going on there? One of his boots is almost as big as the rest of his body. A little bit of paint scraped off there. That's odd. It looks like it's scraped off one of the other um, statues, but they were all in separate plastic bags. So, hmm, and there's a little bit of glue stuck in it. You see, the quality control's not quite there for the money. If it was cheaper, you wouldn't mind so much. But yeah, Mega Man, he was in a lot of difficult um, Nintendo Entertainment System games. That's about all I can tell you about him. Not one of my favourite game series or characters. He's all right, though, isn't he? If you're into that sort of thing. I wouldn't want a statue of him, and if I did, I wouldn't want the statue with the crazy legs but again paint applications okay there's some sort of again the molding lines it's one of those things if they were knocking this out for like 15 quid or something you'd be like yeah that's all right but when it's part of a set of four and a box of stones for 200 quid i draw in breath through my teeth like a plumber who's about to give you a bad quote right off you go and we shall look at one of my favorites the mighty chun li there she is, getting into kicking pose, because that's what she does. Many kicks, also punches, and sometimes throws balls of energy, because why wouldn't you? Um, yeah, sort of inhumanly long legs is what spoils this one, isn't it? Look at... What? 
what? L like she's, what is going on there? I, I don't understand. Is it some sort of well, some sort of cartoon aesthetic, I suppose? But due to the fact all the face and that are rendered actually quite realistically, and um, the is really down hard on the sofa, so we can get in a shot there. So I apologise for the wobbling. Um, yeah, it's, uh, at least it's her classic uniform, I suppose, and uh, really nice detailing on the dragon uh, illustrations around her sash there, which is quite good. But yeah, um, I, I don't get the massive legs. I don't get the design of this one, and it's a pity because the paint and the moulding stuff seems to be better on this one than the others. I mean, it could be coincidental, but see, character I like and better statue, but what, it just doesn't quite look human. Again, if they'd gone for something more cartoony, they might have gotten away with that. But it's a little bit too, a little bit too realistic on the anime scale to have massive stick legs. But there we are. Not not awful by any stretch of the imagination. And Captain Marvel, based more on the uh, Carol Danvers of the comics than the film, obviously, as you can see from the design and the face and all that. Um, again, the legs, perhaps because the legs are further apart. You can get away with it a bit, but they are still kind of, yeah, crazy long. Um, and fairly, not the most exciting of poses, fairly generic, but not awful. What is the face like up close? Yeah, yeah, got a little bit of anime to it, that's all right. Yeah, one of the better ones, that again. Oh, oh look at that. Proper bloody, if you'd pay 200 quid for this, you'd be pissed off, wouldn't you? I did not, by the way, I picked this up for £20 off eBay. <laughs> it was basically brand new, except the copy of the game had been taken out. Uh, they had a lot of these. I'm presuming they've been sitting in a warehouse for a long time. Thank you to the mighty Guru Larry for the tip there. He is the Lord High Master of telling me when collector's editions of games are cheap somewhere. Um, yeah, it's fine. It's all right. Again, when the past the detailing and the texturing is very strong. If you look at the sort of sides here, look. Yeah, quite like it, quite like it, but yeah, slightly spoiled by the legs. I mean, we, we've got to say that. We know it's an obvious point, and we've said it before, but my God, what the bloody hell were they thinking? And just not good enough for the money. Fortunately, as we all know, especially if you've followed this in the news at the time, the Infinity Stones more than make up for the rest of it. I'm fucking lying so hard. So here is the centrepiece. You remember what this looked like on the box? Yeah? Yeah? Okay. Okay. Now, look at this plastic piece of tur- um, look. Big old mold, uh, blah, blah, if I can say it, big old moulding nodule in the middle. And it said moulding module, which is amusing, but not relevant. Um, it's just the most plastically piece of shit going. It really fucking is. Marvel, Capcom, Triforce. All of these companies were disgusted to be involved in the production of this. And yes, it lights up, as you can see from the on-off switch and the uh, battery pack there. So you've spent your £200, got some mildly disappointing statues, but you have got this shitty, cheap-looking plastic box. But what do the stones look like? Kinder eggs. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So uh, you've got, okay, there is the minor thing here. These are based more on the ones from the comics, which were all sort of this uniform shape as opposed to the different shapes of the ones from the films. But that's, the thing is the ones in the comics were kind of magical, super powered gems and not just cheap, shitty bits of plastic. They don't even come out, by the way. They're completely glued in. There's just like half a thing sticking out a bit of cheap suede, like you'd get in, um, you know, packaging for a cheap camcorder if you bought it directly from China. You saw the picture earlier on the back of the box. This is what the picture looked like um, in early adverts for this edition. Yeah. Yeah. <sighs> Uh, there are no words, really, are there? Right, let's turn it on and see if it suddenly looks a million times better. Spoilers, it did not. Um, yeah. There you are. They, they breathe, like with a heartbeat thing. And they've got a bit of texturing inside. And they do look 20% less cheap. They now look like this whole thing would have cost seven pence, as opposed to five pence. So, you know, well done. Well done. Um, no, seriously, this is fucking unbelievable. That they, it just astonishes me to this day that they could charge basically two hundred pounds of what the game was like. What is it, thirty, forty? So you're looking at about hundred and fifty pounds, let's say, for 
four statues which aren't the kind of that great and this absolute piece of shit and they knew it would interest people off the back of course of uh, you know coming up into infinity war and endgame at that stage weren't you so they knew it was a big transmedia franchise and they gave us this shit. This is genuinely one of the most pathetic attempts at a collectible I have ever seen. And I'm Ashens. Unbelievable, right? Oh, fuck, it's even worse when it's closed. Let us put that away and never think of it again. Let's look at something nice very briefly. And now, as a palate cleanser, a nice little massively articulated model of one of the, uh, I, you know, I don't even know what, was it a mining machine of some type in the game? I recognise it, but having not played the game, I have to really know what it is. There we go. It's from uh, one of the Red Faction games. Red Faction Gorilla, maybe? I don't know. I've never kept up with the Red Faction games. All I remember about them is explody terrain. But yeah, it's really nice. Look. Look, all the stuff moves. Look. Little pistons and stuff. A little bit of articulation. A little bit of weathering on the plastic. That's more like it. I think I'm genuinely not sure if this came in a collector's edition or it was something you purchased separately. I have a feeling it came with like a slightly more expensive version of the game was sort of stuck on the top of the box, if I recall correctly. But yeah, what a nice little thing. See, didn't have to charge people 200 quid for it and then make it a piece of shit either, did they? Did they? Mm. Look, look how good. Look how good the transfers and the paint is on it. Mmm, mmm, there we are, Red Faction fans. Had a nice little toy they could put on their shelf with this, didn't they? What did uh, fans of Marvel get? Ah, a cleansing jump cut. Do you know, I still don't know why they're referred to as jump cuts on the internet. In filmmaking, a jump cut's something different. We would call that a smash cut. Anyway, that's not relevant. But i tell you what are relevant. Boxes, specifically the ones physical video games come in. People do like a posh box and they've been used to differentiate games and make them look sort of uh, more opulent for many years. For instance, here's a copy of Nexus for the ZX Spectrum that came out in 1986. I remember this game being a bit kind of crap but it's got a very unique box. This wasn't like a style of box they used for certain games as you can tell by the way it's literally got Nexus, uh, you know, actually moulded as part of it. If I recall, there's a slidey thing comes off the top there. And then you open it up and, oh, you've got your little bit of instructions, look. And your cassette tape with your game on it. I think this came out for Commodore 64, Spectrum and Amstrad, if I remember, as most things did back then. But yeah, it's certainly not a new phenomenon, your steel books and your bits and bobs like that. I've just realised this reminds me of the um, wafer brain memory thing that uh, goes in a Terminator. Hmm. But obviously much bigger. It'd be a very large Terminator. Anyway, this leads us into very limited editions of games that are sort of made in order to be limited edition, if that makes sense. So it's games, indie games usually, that uh, are going to be released digitally and they have a very small run of physical games. And there's various companies that do this. Um, was it Limited Run Games? I think were one of the early ones, weren't they? I've got one here from Super Rare Games. This is uh, number two of the Switch version of The Gardens Between. And yeah, this is kind of the the super collectory one. I think they do one that's just, you know, the Switch case. But this has a lot of stuff in for this uh, very nice cover art there from a company called The Voxel Agents. So we've got this kind of dreamlike atmosphere going on. A lot of sort of uh, 80s reference stuff. You've got an old style television, Betamax tape, which says on it, Day at the Beach, I think. And look, Diet Cola. Um, or maybe not Diet. Who knows? On the back, yep. All your screenshots and bits and bobs. Very nice. There's a really, really nice box, actually. Very high quality and glossy and all that, but you would hope so for a high-end collector's edition. So what do they give you in there? So, you know, a little bit of history here. Back in the day, for certain uh, home computer games, they would... Do you know, it's nearly always adventure games, now I think about it. Anyway, and Christ, when I say adventure games, I mean like text-based adventures or interactive fiction, as they refer to it these days. Anyway, the point is they would come with these things called feelies, which were basically little physical versions of things you would find in the game, whether they be jokes and gags or something to do with the plot or whatever. Sometimes they were things you'd have to actually use as part of the game to get information from. That is the kind of thing I enjoy with my collector's editions. I want something that feels like it's part of the game as opposed to just, you know, here's a badge with the logo on or something. So what do we actually get in here? I've had this for a while and I've been dying to bloody open it. The guards, right, we've got a poster. 
solid start. This makes sense to me. The gardens between. Mm. Look at that. It's all very pastely. Uh, yeah, that's rather pretty, isn't it? A game by Voxel Agents. It's a pity the Voxel Agents have such a high contrast black logo because it kind of draws the eye away from the uh, more pasty design of the poster. But anyway, that's one of those things. Oh, good God. Jumper Papercroft. Oh, is it a weighted companion cube? Kind of has a similarity, doesn't it, when it's built by the looks of it? Has this. Oh, it's been die cut as well. So you can just push it out and. Uh, oh, yep. They've cut the little folding bits. Good, you get bonus points for that. Well done. Um, let's put that there. Not particularly exciting. A cube craft cube, but um, yeah, all right. Obviously something from the game, so that's decent. Here is the game itself. Yeah, that's quite important. Without that, you ain't got much, really. We've got a sticker of the logo of the company that did it. That's uh, it's a relevant one because it's got the art from the poster on, but that's not super exciting. We have... What's that there? Oh, it's a, it's a promotional tattoo of a symbol scene in the game. This <laughs> is one of those things you wet and then put on your hand. Okay, then, that's that's a thing which um, apparently exists and is in this box. I don't know what this stuff is, but I'm about to find out. Rip. Cards of some type, all uh, individually packaged inside more packaging. The cards between Super I don't know Mm, oh well, we're going to have to open up and see what they are, aren't we? Because if not, we'll never bloody know. So, slightly thin but very glossy cards. Ah, and it's characters from the games. Nothing on the back. What relevancy do these have? I don't know. They just Can you just, like, collect them from all the super rare games and then wonder why you spent so much money on some cards? I'm really not getting that. Yeah. Hey? We got the same bloody card twice. What? What's going on here? Are these like blind bags? Is that right? Nope. Nope, not interested in those now. Go away. Rot away. Uh, the Gardens Between Book. Is this an art book? I do like a nice art book with prototype art and stuff in. And all your ideas. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's rather pretty. Oh, yeah. Supporting the game for himself now. Oh, yes. Here we are. Concept art and stuff. Nice. Level elements. French mechanical arm. Ooh, good old friend got himself an arm on the go. Good for him. Uh, classic friend. Um, <laughs> oh god, there's a statue. It's like something a journey, though, isn't it? Oh, that's very pretty. All good, and there is some words. Good, because I do enjoy actually reading about how they put the games together as well as seeing the pretty pictures. Good. I like that. That's very good. That ties in with the game nicely. Oh, soundtrack. Not generally a massive fan of game soundtracks, because often the music is just kind of, A, available elsewhere, so your CD is a bit of a pain in the bum, and B, because, um, you know, if you can just play it off of YouTube or something, I suppose, or off the website, um, or Spotify, increasingly, these days. Uh, this is quite nicely done, though, it must be said. Growing Pains. Tim Shill, hang on. Is this actually the soundtrack? Central voice production. This is interesting. What is it? See, I was going to play, say, I'll oh, play some of it in the video. Yeah, that's a good idea on YouTube, isn't it? Playing some copyrighted music. I'm sure that will go down well. So is this an album of the soundtrack? Or is this um, something more sort of uh, based around it and inspired by it? Hmm. Interesting. So this seems like proper albums. That's very nice. Very nice indeed. Now I've got to find my CD player. What do the discs look like? I would like to know. Answer? Pretty. I think we can guess what the other one's going to look like. It's going to be the other person bouncing on the trampoline. <gasps> oh, it was as well. Look at that. Well, that makes sense. That's very nice. Good, good. That goes in the nice pile. I should probably put the game in the nice pile. And some badges of the characters in the game. Well, relevant at least. And at least they're not um, just some sort of generic shape. They have actually been shaped to the things they are, making them quite nice pin badges. So good, good. Overall, cards can piss off. Um, Paper craft thing's okay, yeah. The problem with something that you fold out of a bit of cardboard is it doesn't feel like it's given much value to it. Do you know what I mean? When you've spent your money, I suppose. Uh, that, that can just go over there and we'll forget that existed. And overall, the poster's quite good. Um, I'm slightly more middling on these, actually. That can go in the middle. There we are. We have judged the contents. I do particularly like the very, very precise packaging. That's excellent, because nothing's going to get damaged in there. Do you know, we were talking about boxes before this started. That's actually my favourite thing of this. The box is bloody lovely. Do you know, the box being displayed, I think, is nicer than the poster. 
I think I prefer the art on that, yeah. That's very nice. And I should point out, embossed logo. Mm. Can we put it behind a velvet rope? Well, there we are. That's something you can get from these uh, limited edition games if you particularly enjoy such things. Now, I'm going to have to quickly cut again in order to clean the sofa up. And now we go from special editions to just merchandise available of video games. And we start with the ridiculous. Please enjoy this Tomb Raider candle. I don't know. I just don't know. The most bizarre and generic thing you can possibly imagine. What would a Tomb Raider candle smell of? Uh, sweat? Desperation? Falling off a cliff? Being attacked by wolves? What does that smell like? I don't know. Gun ammunition? I've got no idea. Um, I've never actually opened this up, so I don't know what oh, it's like inside. Whoop. Oh, specifically Shadow of the Tomb Raider. There we are. So it's basic. Oh, bloody hell! The st wow! That is a potent smell. It's incredibly highly perfumed. It smells like cheap air freshener. Why the hell would you want a candle that smells of cheap air freshener? What the f bloody hell is this thing? Anyway, it comes <laughs> in this uh, generally quite nice little Tomb Raider glass. I mean, you possibly can get the candle out and use it for something afterwards if you're a particular fan of Shadow of the Tomb Raider. But, um... Oh, as candles go, I would not want to light that. I mean, I imagine it's not quite as strong as it's smelling right now, I would hope, anyway. But, yeah, that's kind of a Tesco value air freshener smell going on. What has this got to do with Tomb Raider? I don't know. Do you know what? I'm not even going to think about it, because I'm just going to break my brain. Let's just put it back inside, and then uh, perhaps it will grow some meaning over time after they retcon Tomb Raider and make Lara Croft a candle salesman. I don't know. Bloody hell. Next up, <clears throat> OK Boomer, it's the Far Cry 5 Play It Like Boomer box. So I don't know if this was generally available or not, if this was just like a journalist thing, but I managed to get hold of one. And yeah, there's a reason that I've cut away. The box this comes in is absolutely massive. Also, it's frighteningly high quality. The quality of the print on that, I have actually bought art prints which are less detailed and have less good colour matching. So they really put the time into the bloody box now and it looks absolutely amazing. But what do you get in it? So we should point out before we go on, Boomer is the name of the friendly dog from Far Cry 5. That's quite relevant. So inside the box are three items. Item number one, a sort of neckerchief thing to tie around your dog's neck or something. I don't think Boomer in the game had one this colour like this, did that? I? I, I can't remember. Um, it's got pictures of grenades on, because every dog loves grenades, except the dogs who have encountered them, I imagine. Uh, yeah, you could use it as a handkerchief, and blow your nose on some grenades, there's, there's an image for you. Thanks for that. Right, next is, unbelievably, a dog bowl, yay! Look, there's a sticker of Boomer on the inside, and then printing on the outside it says Far Cry 5. Picture of Boomer again, and play it like Boomer. Hmm. Interestingly, there was also a note saying don't actually use this as a dog bowl because it's unsafe or something. I don't know why. Is it a type of plastic? It seems all right. Or is it because there's a sticker in it or because of the ink on the side? I don't know. I just don't know. Because all this pales next to item number three. The squeaky ARC. Ahem. Yeah, it's, it's absolutely huge. So ARC is a kind of uh, fictional, I'm pretty sure it's fictional, isn't it? Um, rifle thing that is one of the weapons in Far Cry 5, quite simply. My main memory of it is it's described as being semi-automatic in the game. It's obviously fully automatic when you use it. Anyway, it says Far Cry 5 on it. It's a very soft rubber, as one would expect, because it is quite literally a dog toy. Next door's dog going crazy, I imagine. Yeah. Um, easy to throw. Cool effect. Scare the shit out of everyone. Yeah. Um, I mean, it's got the orange bit on the end. The dog's going to chew that off in two seconds. You know what they're like. Hello, Boomer. Hey, what's that sound? Squeaky assault rifle, mate. Pay attention. Ah, oh, dearie me. So, um, yeah. I don't know. I think it's probably a bad idea to be giving any form of gun to a dog, because dogs have notoriously lax trigger discipline. But anyway, we can now move on to our final joy of the day. Jump cut. And finally today, you ain't gonna believe it, but somebody's actually sent me a press kit.
presumably by accident, but yes, a press kit from Mega Cat Studios. I know of this company. Look, there's their logo of like a cat that can't see because it's got joy pads in its eyes and for some reason it's got a Super Nintendo cartridge around its neck. Yes. Anyway, uh, I'm aware of this company for they have made in the past many uh, new games on old NES cartridges which would work with the original machine. I've got three of them and they're all very good actually. There's like a puzzle game called Little Medusa. There's like a sort of action vaguely sports sort of game called Log Jammers and there's another one I can't remember the name of but it's basically uh, Imagine Punch-Out but with creepy monsters. They're all very good. I was quite impressed with them so I don't know what all this is about because I have yet to open it but now I have and we shall look. It is the history of food and games. Okay I'm looking at the back of it. Eat, play, love. Exclusive press kit. Ooh. So is Eat, play, love the game? It's got like an Incredible Hulk style character with entirely white eyes eating in a NES cartridge, an Atari 2600 jo uh, joystick and a PS1 controller. That's uh, dual shock. Interesting. So what's going on here? Bite the bullet, or is, or is bite the bullet the game, and bleeds into the real world, giving players the opportunity to use in-game heroics to address the issue of hunger facing individuals around the world. Bloody hell. Um, this is huge, this book. So this is presumably the game. The characters in it, Chewie and Chewella. <laughs> really? My God, they didn't skip uh, abdomen day. Um, yeah, let's have a look. Smorgasbord. Is that a good guy or a bad guy? I don't... Oh, man. Now that is a fucking pixel art design. My God. The Giga Vulture and the Flesh Golem. Over here we call those MPs. Uh, oh, and there's the people who may have worked on the game, maybe in the game, or maybe both. Who knows? Bloody hell. There's everything you'd want in here if you were writing an article or something. Christ almighty. Right, what have we got then? We've got some caramelised popcorn. Quite a lot of it, actually. I'm going to have to try some right now, aren't I? What, what a hardship that will be, if only it was something obviously out of date. Go on, I'll try a little bit, but it'll likely gum my mouth up for talking, so I won't do a whole lot. Oop, it does not open well. Hmm. Hmm. Pleasingly not over-sweet caramel popcorn. That's pretty good, actually. And I've got this small hammer. <laughs> it says Meat Smasher on it. And it's got a picture of like a steak. I don't think you'd really use this as a meat tenderizer. Is that something from the game? I've got no idea. Metal cup with the company logo on for all your storage of pens and liquids. Uh, ooh, ooh, a spooky black envelope. What is what is this? I'm, oh, in case this is something. Just, maybe this is. A, it didn't occur to me this might actually be a bloody code for the game or something. That would actually make sense, wouldn't it? I'm in great difficulty opening this. It's very thick. Uh, no, it's a little card that says. Thank you for taking this journey with us. He just sends a box, guys. We hope you enjoy playing as much as we enjoyed creating the Mega Cat team. Ah, oh, and that may actually be handwritten. Uh, now I'm trying to work it out if it is or not. I think it actually is. What nice handwriting. Right, we've got some cardboard. <laughs> Seriously, cardboard coasters? Oh, I hate these things. Yeah. Mm. Oh, well, come stick that on eBay now. Uh, we've got some napkins for reasons. They're very posh napkins. I'll uh, save those for when the vicar comes round for tea and we have hilarious 1970s sitcom style stuff going on. Uh, we've got a soft baked, oh it is soft, bloody hell, falling a bit, handcrafted cookie from a Nesto. Okay, whatever the bloody hell this is. A Jenny Lee sticky bun, small batch, sustainably sourced. It's full of actual food. I was expecting more sort of game stuff. There's a lot of uh, packing stuff. Oh, and the Mega Cat Studios large batch. I find it very odd that at no stage anywhere have they used the name of their company except on the metal badge, which is somewhere you would expect not to see it. How odd. Anyway, nifty. Oh, I've got to try a bit of this now, haven't I? Ugh, ugh. What an imposition. Cool. What, what a tragedy it is to eat a nice thing. Now. Mmm. That is very nice. A little bit sweet for me, maybe. That's just a personal taste. And it's very soft, as advertised. Very nice. Mmm. Well. For relevance to game, it's just this really, isn't it? I've always wondered what you've got in these press kit things. It seems to mostly be sort of random stuff. Very, very odd. But, well, there we are. They've got a game coming out. Got no idea if it's any good or not. Don't know what the format is for. Um, we're about to find out. It's got to be on Steam or something, isn't it? I genuinely don't know. 
It's got to say in here somewhere. But now it's full of like recipes and stuff. <laughs> I just don't know. Well, there we go. I tell you what, I shall do a very quick bit of uh, research after this and throw the information up on the screen now. There we are. Th that's a thing. Well, blimey, that was an interesting look into another world. And now I'm going to go off and I'm going to try this generally sticky bun. And I shall tell you via the medium of text whether it was nice or not. And you know what, folks? There's even merchandise for video games that don't exist. <laughs> So Numskull are doing like one of their quarter size arcade cabs. Um, well, this is going to be more of a sort of uh, USB hub type thing, which is quite clearly a version of the urban legend of the Polybius game. I uh, should point out this has nothing to do with our film or the design in our film at all, which looks very, very different to this. It's an entirely separate projecty thing. But if you are even vaguely interested, have a gander. Uh, there's a link in the description below there. This is just a prototype, by the way, and annoyingly, they want it back. Subscribe for more.